imagine a world where when you folded your hand pre-flop, you could then get your hand back. Unfold Texas Hold'em on PokerStars is finally here and the people are going crazy. Wait, what? No, they're not going, actually, no, they're not going crazy for the game. But there is a new variant here called Unfold Hold'em. It's not Unfold Em Hold'em, Unfold Hold'em on PokerStars, where, and now we've seen the joke bet by Armenian Mike. We've seen the joke call by Men the Master win. Now we have the joke fold, where you fold before the flop, but now you get a second chance if it goes to a flop, and now you can unfold your hand, and you get to see the flop, you can potentially win another hand. And now, if you love to pay rake, which everyone in poker loves to pay rake, PokerStars has been nice enough to give you a second chance to pay a nice 7% rake. That's right, for 7% rake, you can check out Unfold Hold'em on PokerStars. Wait, the guy unfolded Jack Deuce in 8-5? This guy seemed awful. What are they thinking? Timmy here. Joey, how much is PokerStars paying you for this video? This video not sponsored by PokerStars. I do not have an affiliation. They did not pay me any percentage of this video to make this video. Please do not make a video about me making money for an affiliate for this video. All right, so we're going to take a look at exactly what Unfold Hold'em is. We're going to take a look at some comments made from people on Twitter and their stories and their comments about this game. And uh, we're going to say, hey, is it a good game? Is it a bad game? Is it GTO or is it GTFO? All right, so let's take a look at the rules officially over on PokerStars for uh, Unfold Hold'em Poker. And it uh, looks like it's played very similar to Texas Hold'em. At the start of each hand, each player plays an Unfold Ante. These Antes form the Unfold Pot. Then the hand plays out according to normal Texas Hold'em rules. However, all players who folded preflop, so you got to fold before the flop, if you make a, if you call a better, if you raise and get called, you're not allowed to play for the unfold unfold pot here. So the peers that people that folded pre-flop are given a chance to unfold once the flop is dealt. So everyone has to either click fold or unfold, and you don't know who folded them or who unfolded them until each person's time bank runs out. So the choice to pay this unfold bet is made at the same time, and then players who pay the unfold bet cannot make any further bets after this point. So basically there's two separate pots. There's the main pot and then there's the unfold pot. And then you all compete for the unfold pot, but you can't win the main pot and there's no more further betting. It's a one time pay the ante and then that's it. So it could only be on the flop, not on the turn or the river. And then it says if the main pot is won before the four bolt full board is dealt, all remaining community cards will be dealt to determine the winner of the unfold pot. So you get to see rabbit hunt potentially, which I think will be kind of cool for uh, people out there. This also says a minimum of four players must be dealt into a hand for the untold unfold ante to be collected. And it says for return to unfold antes, if the main pot is decided pre-flop, if there are fewer than two players Fewer than two players fold pre-flop and then no players choose to unfold. Oh, actually, okay. So if no players choose to unfold on the flop, it looks like everybody gets their money back. So that's kind of interesting. It's a very uh, interesting wrinkle. And then to play unfold hold'em, there's no table selection. I guess it goes in some sort of a, a seat me kind of category. So yeah, there's no table selection. So you can't actually choose who you play with in this game. Now we're taking a look at some gameplay here over from Andrus. Andreas Froelich, uh, who does some YouTube content, and uh, he put up about a 17-minute video playing the game, if you guys want to check that out. But yeah, so we'll take a look at a little bit of the game here and talk more about uh, if this is a good game, bad game, or we'll talk more about what we think about this game. So it doesn't list on the PokerStar site. Luckily for them, they don't have any, I mentioned this quite yet, but the rake from what I calculate is 7%. So in addition to the to regular rake at the other table, it's going to be 7%. And so it looks like the ante that you pay pre-flop is 60% of the small blind. So at 10 cent, 20 cent, it's going to be six cents a piece. Kind of looking at the game. It seems kind of fun. It, um, I mean, I don't think you can multi-table this because you have to act pretty fast on the fold or unfold pod. And if you don't act, you're just going to automatically be folded and not able to win. But I think if you're one tabling or two tabling, it seems like it, it, it might make things kind of fun. I don't know if I would ever play it or if I would ever tell someone to play it or check it out, but... I guess we're going to kind of see if people enjoy it or people don't enjoy it. I haven't really seen anyone play it besides uh, one or two videos here on YouTube. And then now, will this format be as popular as Zoom? I don't think there's any chance that's possible. I think that PokerStars has done a very weak job of actually promoting these formats and pushing these formats. I think once people see this 7% rake on the anti pot that that's going in, that's being paid every time there's a flop being seen. So I think people will start to realize, okay, like the, the pros probably want to play this game. I don't know if people are going to want to stream the game. I don't know if they're going to be able to create content around the game. And I think for a game format to, to get popular here, they're going to need some of their professional poker players to, to play the game, to promote the game, to have some clips go out there and things like that. Because 
what we've seen from these formats in the past is that when they're kind of like mer whatever they're okay they're this or they're that we've seen them just not be popular and i don't really see any promotion for these game formats at all so if, if people out there aren't seeing it if you want no exist or if you don't know to try it out or if you don't know if someone's even enjoying the format well then why are you going to want to check the format out if if really no one's trying it it's kind of like that game i don't even remember what it's called the hearthstone poker game they came up with power poker or something like that where i mean it kind of looked cool but no one's playing it so if people were playing the power poker game i, I honestly I can't remember what it's called but if people are what was the game called you know what the game's called the power poker game power up i think it's called power up power up yeah if people were playing the power up it looks pretty fun i think that if more people were playing it if they got more streamers to play it if they got some of their pros to play it and lead the charge we'd see we'd maybe see that game be more popular but also you know with that rake and and with these games being debatably beatable i think people are starting to wise up a little bit i think people when they if they're trying out these new game formats usually they're familiar with hold'em they're familiar with plo they're familiar with how poker works and maybe they're even a little bit more familiar with rake so they maybe pay a little more attention to that while if you're a newer player and you just play hold'em in the home games or if you play hold'em you see it on tv you're probably going to want to play texas hold'em you're probably not going to want to go play this game until you get some comfortability with texas hold'em in general so like i said will this catch on i just don't think so it doesn't seem like a fun idea to try sometimes yes does it seem like a fun idea that could catch on in live games i think that's interesting because I feel like this could actually catch on in live games the joke fold now because there's already enough action in these live games and people whether what are they going to fold is it going to impact how much they fold in a live setting and, and i mean probably a little bit but at the same time people just really hate folding in live settings so i think this kind of could make things fun although it will give you less hands an hour because it's really going to slow down the game in live if people have to keep putting in an ante maybe there's a one big blind ante i don't know that, that, that kind of uh, i don't think that's gonna make any sense but yeah, I could see this catching on somewhere in, um, in in the live setting, but in terms of an online setting, yeah, I think it would just need way more promotional dollars behind it, way more marketing behind it, and way more of a push. And now PokerStars, I imagine, spends a lot of time developing these games that I think they would want to put the push behind it, but for whatever reason, we just haven't seen that. Um, but maybe they'll make enough rake from here to, to justify it. But I think if, if you have their executives or if you have people that are making decisions, taking a look at this and saying, oh, well, this format wasn't popular. This format wasn't popular. Well, no one played this format. Well, you got to really think, why would they play the format? How are they going to see the format exist? They have to have a reason to go check out the format and then want to stick around the format, whether that's enough games are running or higher stakes are going, or they want to maybe table select there or anything like that. So will that be seen or will that take place? I guess I just don't think so. But if you are an executive and you're wondering why, oh, this game's not popular. Like I think some people say, oh, this is not popular. This is not popular. Well, why would it be popular if, if extra effort isn't done to bring in new players, whether it's promotions, whether it's contests, whether it's no rake for a certain period of time to get you introduced to the game. But I think when you come out firing on a game, you put 7% on an extra ante that goes in every single hand. I think some smart people are gonna be like, all right, they're really trying to boom, fuck us in the ass once again, like we've seen in the past here. So I don't know, I hope it works out. I, I do enjoy and applaud PokerStars for at least trying some new formats and new variants, but that once it, there's the coming up with the format, there's coming up with the rake, and then there's the promoting and the marketing and the advertising of the product of that format too. So I think you have to have all three of those things and even some more things. Most importantly, the format being fun, popular, enjoyable, potentially you can win at that. But, uh, but yeah, not sure this is the one. Now, whether it's a game that's beatable, I don't know. We're gonna have to figure it out in terms of with this extra 7% rake. Obviously these antis are being paid each hand. So to me, it seems like it would, uh, make the games tighter overall, I believe. I think that um, maybe some players, if they're weaker players and they have a close spot, they might just decide to to fold so that way they can play the unfold pot rather than put some money in with the marginal decision. It's like It seems like it'll be a fun variant for people that like like some extra action that want to gamble it up here. Uh, one of the most interesting comments I read was over on 2 plus 2 from Rapidish123 said unfold home is quite weird. It looks like if you raise first in and everyone folds, the antis go back to each player. So there's a lot of incentive for playing tighter. The button wants to raise fold in less and the big blind defend less. If you raise first in and someone calls to see a flop, then everyone else gets a chance to fight for the side pot. The players that saw the flop will lose those antis without any way to get them back. Also, it looks like position after folding is extra important because if nobody wants to fight for the antis, the last player to act can just click them. Although that's not true, so he didn't. The, it's actually at the same time you choose, so that doesn't really work that way. Then the size of the antis are huge compared to the big blind. 
So I think that, that the game will have a very low rake on average. Eh, not very true, 7%. I'm not going to call it low rake at all. It kind of seems like Stars is saying more rake is better here. Uh, he said, maybe there's a catch I can't quite figure it out. Why is Stars putting out the game if it generates way less rake than normal tables? Dun, 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 dun. And he says, pretty weird game. I think that small blind opening ranges should be insanely tight. Well, I don't really want to get into small blind ranges. But then he made one more comment, which I really enjoyed. He said, the game looks way better for the pros than short deck hold'em. It looks like it's possible to achieve higher win rates at that game. Not only because of that, but also because of the extra EV players can win by two players fighting each other more than they should. For example, if two loose fish are limping a lot and facing each other, they will be bleeding a lot of anties, which is interesting. Just an example, if fish limps and it falls to the big blind, both will lose three big blinds. 0.3 big blinds. Another example, let's say you are 0.3 BB. Another example, let's say you are you face a break-even preflop decision. Calling is somewhat a break-even play unless you have an edge over that guy. If you call, you'll be losing 30 big blinds per hundred there because you will lose your antis. If you if you fold, at least you will keep them. This creates an insane dynamic in the games, which will also allow people to go looser than unfold GTO because even though you have less incentive to make loose opens, big blind also has a lot of incentive to fold the big blind, so you could actually get away with very light steals if the big blind is avoiding those break-even situations. Now, if the big blind over reacts by over-defending, both players will be in a lose-lose scenario where the other player wins. So it's kind of interesting because it just kind of talks about a little bit different strategy that could be going to the game. All right, so reading some comments through on Twitter. Dan Ott, World Series Poker Runner Up last year, said the other guys in the video unfolded that Poker Stars posted, folded, unfolded 8-5 offsuit and Jack-2 offsuit on <laughs> 9-3. And then I put down the formula EV. Um, I'm not even going to read that, but it's in the Poker Stars video for the game. So maybe that, that must actually mean something. Rick OSU said Poker Stars continue, continues to do their best to make online poker a joke. Um, I don't necessarily think this is a, a joke. I do think the idea of double rake is a joke, though, for sure. Dan, Dan Janger says, What next? Redo the flop. I said, Fuck it. Why not? He obviously did not hear uh, Power Up Poker because Power Up Poker, I believe you can actually do that. Uh, David says, why would you ever call preflop? Definitely still uh, still reason to call preflop. Belmar, this is getting out of hand. We should do a pool to see how long this fucking game lasts. Obviously, the public sentiment is uh, not in PokerStars favor. Bruno says, hey, PokerStars, can you can you make some more ridiculous than split hold them? PokerStars hold my beer. <laughs> uh, Toby Nash, this is liter terrible, literally terrible. Andrew Phillips says, so basically preflop means nothing. I guess I'd fold my all my hands. And um, yeah, I don't think that's actually what would end up happening here. And then Matthias says, nice. I don't, now only I need an unpunt button and I'm good. That'd actually be a really great idea for an unpunt button. So <laughs> Gary says, next variation will be the fuck I should have folded. If you don't like the flop, you get your free flop call back. Minus the rake, of course. That's going nowhere. <laughs> kind of fucked up, but definitely the rake's going nowhere. And last but not least, Chris says, thank you Party Poker for allowing me to move away from this shit. Awful idea. Love to know Dean real feelings on this and not his paid feelings. So you guys can see the public sentiment right now. I'm sure a lot of these guys haven't played the game. Not necessarily on PokerStars' favor. Of course, PokerStars probably built this up on themselves with some of the decisions and the communication that they made in the past with players. But will people like it? Do you guys enjoy it? Will you check it out? Will you play it? Would you ever play it for money mistakes? Would you ever try to get better at it? How long before the solver takes over? Let me know what you guys' thoughts on the game. Unfold Hold'em on PokerStars. Thanks, guys. Much love. Peace out. Oh, what's this? Poker Stars has a new game format. Unfold Hold'em? Well, let's check out and see what that's all about. Oh, what's this? New game from Poker Stars? Unfold Hold'em? Ah, I got a promo video. Let's check this video out. Wait. Wait, does that mean they get to charge more rake? No, no, let me check the site. Let me check the official page. No rake, please no rake, please no rake, please no rake. No, no rake, I don't see anything about rake. Oh my God, oh my God, let's go to YouTube, let's see. All right, Andreas has a video here. Let's see if they rake these pots. Oh no, no, this pot's supposed to be 288. Oh no, the pot's 268. How much are they taking? 20 cents, what's the rake on that? 7%, oh my God. Here we go again. <laughs> I like this new game, guys. Timmy here. If, if I was in a hand, I'm, I'm folding everything. I'm playing for the unfolding pot, baby. Yeah. Timmy, fuck y'all. Douchebags.